So in this video, we're going to be thinking about a signal transduction for process in a plant, and we're going to be thinking about the major drought hormone, which is ABA. So ABA equals abscisic acid, uh, which is a drought hormone. So ABA is made in the roots in response to drought. It travels up to the plant um, and it initiates a bunch of stuff. But the most important thing uh, is it regulates plant stomata. Um, so uh, stomata, we have uh, a pair of guard cells. So the stomata is both things combined and each one is an individual guard cell. Um, and uh, that, the space between the two cells uh, is where we have water uh, being lost from the plant. Um, so in the presence of ABA, those stomata will go from open, where we're losing lots of water, to a more closed conformation, like that. Um, so uh, the, the pore will close, so we reduce water loss um, as a result of ABA signalling uh, and this is quite a rapid response that happens uh, within minutes uh, which makes it quite a quick response as far as a plant is concerned and obviously that's a really important physiological parameter for a plant so quite a lot of effort has gone into understanding how ABA signalling and stomatal closure works. So. Um, the ABA receptor was only relatively recently uh, identified. It took quite a long time for it to be identified. Um, so I'm going to go through uh, what we call the central signalling module for ABA. So I'm going to do that um, over here to start with, and then I'm going to think about how that relates to what's happening in the guard cell. So let's think about it to start with if we've got no ABA. So this will be in a nice, happy, healthy plant. Okay. So the ABA receptor is a protein, it's a small cytosolic protein called PIA1. Okay. Uh, which in the absence of ABA is just kind of sitting there in the cytosol. Okay. Um, but there are two other proteins that are involved. So one is a protein called a PP2C. Uh, so this is a phosphatase. So it removes phosphate groups from things and it's sometimes uh, named ABI1. Uh, you might see that name if you're reading around. Okay. So we have a phosphatase and then we have a third protein is called OST1. Um, and that is a kinase. Uh, so kinases phosphorylate things, okay? Um, and uh, that is sometimes uh, known as a SNRK, an SNRK, okay? So, so when there's no ABA, what happens? It's a PI1 is just sitting there, it's not doing anything. PP2C is inhibiting the OST1. Okay, so PP2C is active and the OST1 is inactive. And it's OST1 that would be wanting to send the signal to the rest of the cell. So with no ABA in the resting state, uh, PI1 is not doing anything and SNRK, uh, the OST1 is inactive. So then what happens when ABA comes along? Well, ABA comes along and it binds to the PI1, uh, which is the receptor. So PI1 is the receptor. PI1 with ABA has a really high affinity for the PP2C. So the PP2C sticks to PI1. So the PP2C is then inactive because it's stuck to the PI1, it can't do anything. Okay. That releases OST1, which is now active. And it can go and activate other proteins. So what it might do um, is, let's say that there's an ion channel 
at the plasma membrane. Um, so what the OST1 would do uh, is to activate that. So we go from inactive. OST1 is a kinase, so it will go and add a phosphate group to the ion channel that activates it. And that means that ions can start to go through the channel. OK, so the OST1 is a kinase, so it adds phosphate groups onto it. Um, and in this case, that would activate the ion channel. So in the absence of ABA, um, it would be inactive. With ABA, that ion channel starts to get activated. OK, so that's how the signalling works in terms of the core proteins together. So now let's try and think about that in the context of our stomatal guard cells. I'm going to draw these out quite big. And we're going to think about two different processes. Okay, So one is about opening and one is about closing. Now it's important, both of these processes are happening in both cells. It's not that one cell is doing one and one cell is doing the other, but just for them making it easy to see what's going on, I'm gonna draw them in separate cells, okay? So obviously the opening process, if we're trying to close the stomata, we want to activate anything to do with closing, but we also need to inactivate anything to do with opening. Okay, so both processes need to happen, but they are both happening in the same cell at the same time. I'm just putting them separately so it's a little bit easier to see what's going on. Okay, so how does a guard cell open and close? Well, fundamentally, it's about ion movement. Okay, so if we think about opening a guard cell, the way you open a guard cell is to increase its turgor pressure. So you need to have water coming into the cell. So the way that you do that is to have uh, ion transport, and we're going to meet, think about this in terms of a couple of different ions. Okay, so our first ion is potassium. Okay, so in opening, potassium comes into the cell, and chloride also comes into the cell. Okay, so if you have both of those ions coming into the cell, then you will end up with water going into the cell. OK, um, and that will give you overall high turgor pressure. So the cell is really full of water, it's bursting. So that means that it, the, the whole pore will open. OK, and uh, so we have potassium chloride coming into the cell. The water follows. Actually, we just need to be mindful of the chloride and the potassium will actually then go into the vacuole as will the water. So most of this will actually accumulate in the vacuole. Um, so, but we know less about the transporters at the vacuole. So I'm going to leave those for the moment. We're just going to think about the transporters at the plasma membrane. Okay, but don't forget that all of this stuff is going into the vacuole. Okay. So these processes we need to inhibit. We need to get stop potassium coming in and we need to stop chloride coming in. But we also need to activate closure, so we need to have an efflux of potassium and we need to have an efflux of chloride. Okay, And if we activate those, then the water should follow. Again, we do need to have the same things happening at the vacuole, but I'm just not showing it for clarity. But physiologically, that's just as important. OK, so if we're going to regulate the system, we need to switch off these ion channels. We need to close those ion channels and we need to open these ion channels over here. OK, so let's think about how that works. So we start off with ABA. That goes into the cell. And through the processes that I've just explained, uh, I'm not going to draw this out again, uh, but we know that as a result of ABA signaling, because of the pi 1 and the PP2C, uh, we end up having OST1 is active. Okay, 
Um, it's active and it's a kinase. So it will go and add phosphate groups to other proteins. Okay, so OST1 gets activated as a result of this signaling molecule module in here, so via PI1 and PP2C. So this stuff is happening over here. I'm just not showing it for clarity on my diagram. Okay, so OST1 is now active. So what's OST1 going to go and do? Well, one of the proteins it phosphorylates is this ion channel over here. So this chloride channel is a channel called SLAC1. It adds a phosphate group onto SLAC1 and it activates. So with the phosphate group, SLAC1 is then active. So that's active, so we're now getting rid of the chloride. Okay, so OST1 directly phosphorylates SLAC1. We open the chloride channel, out goes the chloride. If the chloride's going out, so will the water. Okay. But OST1 uh, can phosphorylate other things, so one of the things it can do is to go and phosphorylate this ion channel over here. Okay, so this is a potassium inward channel. Um, and phosphorylating that inward channel is going to have a similar impact. So, uh, well, it's going to have the opposite, in fact. So that is going to inactivate. So phosphorylation sometimes activates, sometimes it represses. So in this case, OST1 is repressing uh, the potassium. Remember, OST1 is in both of these cells, so it's not crossing the cell membrane in the way I've shown it. Uh, it's within one cell. I'm just, uh, I've just separated out the process so we can see them. Okay. So OST1 phosphorylated SLAC1 and activated it. It phosphorylated this potassium channel over here and it inactivated it. Okay, so we're starting to shift the balance from opening to closing. The other thing that happens that's really important in, um, in drought signaling and guard cells in particular is we have another mechanism. We have cytosolic free calcium. So calcium uh, lives in the vacuole. And in response to ABA and OST1, we get uh, we get activation of uh, calcium channels. So we have calcium uh, increases in response to ABA. Okay, and there's various different fluorescent dyes that you can use to measure that. Okay. And calcium is another signaling agent. So calcium also goes and does similar things. So this chloride channel could be acted by via phosphate, but it can also be activated via calcium. It's sensitive to both signals. So uh, and it doesn't matter which signal it receives, both of them will activate the channel. So um, you can have calcium dependent or independent signaling will activate that channel over there. And calcium will do the same thing uh, with the potassium channel over here, so it will come and inactivate. So that potassium inward channel is also sensitive to both calcium and, phos uh, and the phosphorylation. So uh, we have a uh, sort of parallel signaling approach. So it doesn't matter whether you go directly via OST1 or you go uh, via this calcium route. Uh, we have what we call signal convergence. which is where two signals, or two or more signals, um, target the same protein. So here we've got a phosphorylation signal and we've got a calcium signal. They're both targeting the same protein. And in this case, it doesn't matter which one you have. Both of them will activate the chloride channel. Um, and as we activate the chloride channel, we start to get chloride moving out of the cell. And the more chloride that we move out, the more water that moves out. So overall, that will close the guard cell. So, uh, so the central signaling molecule, uh, so ABA doesn't directly interact with OST1, it goes via this PI1 PP2C OST route over here. So that is happening down here, I've just not shown it all for clarity. But once we've got OST1, that can go and activate 
uh, the closing processes and inactivate the opening processes. And we also have some calcium in there doing the same thing for good measure.